So I, I understand you're keeping in the tradition of uh, first practice 12:01 tonight. Is, is that true? Yes, sir. We something we've established uh, four years. Can believe it's four years that we've established this. Uh, you know, our philosophy at that time was that we couldn't wait to get back on the field and do this thing. So uh, we got to go through all this, uh, you know, paperwork type of stuff today. Thursday's the first time we get on, and so Thursday starts at 12:01 for us. We're doing our uh, midnight conditioning run. Is, is there an advantage to it, or is it more just a, a kind of a mental thing to, to get the season off and rolling? I don't know whether there's an advantage to it or not, but it's something that I think mentally for us is that something we establish it gives separate us maybe a, uh, different from somebody else. I don't know. We, I, we like to think that. Um, maybe it's a mindset. We want to get on the field. We want to be the first ones there. We want to do the things we necessary to get it done. And that's kind of the way we've approached it. So, do the guys look forward to it? What's their feeling about Well, I, I think they're, they're looking forward to it, and I think a lot of them are prepared for it. It's going to be a lot different than we did four years ago, I guarantee you, but no one had no idea how to do it. Now we have an idea to do it, and it really brings the team together. Uh, you know, part of the idea is based on, uh, you hear these basketball team programs do this midnight madness, it's kind of the same thing. So, I don't know whether it creates advantage or not, but I think it creates a little mental edge for us, and I think we're excited about doing it. Don't have to do it in the heat of the day or get up early in the morning to do it. And it's just something different that we, we're going to do for pack football. I spent the whole uh, off season. Uh, you did have a little spring football. You've done some recruiting. You've talked a lot about the conference of the season. Just how good is it to be able to get on the field with life and the so to speak? Oh, I, I can't wait. That's uh, my refuge is out there on the football field, being able to do what, what I, I, I like to do is be able to work, not stand behind a computer and answer emails and phone calls and do that other stuff. But what, what I'm really excited is being back with our players. I really think we got special players, we got special kids. And I, I want to be back with them every day and I want to have some fun with them. I want to see their, what they're their growth, what they've done throughout the off season. We've had such a long hiatus from them from uh, end of spring ball until now. It's almost four months and you don't have, uh, you can't work with them by NCAA standards and rules. You see them in the hallways, you see them in the passing. But I want to go work with them and be around on a daily basis, so I can't wait to get started. The D1 schools get about five weeks to prepare for the first game. Troy Calhoun told me, you got to have five weeks. You don't get five weeks, so you got to condense it a little bit. Well, I, like I said to our coaches yesterday, we, we got to become better coaches than anybody in the state. We got to become better coaches. We got to get everybody ready to play in mean, really two weeks of preseason camp. You got to show them all the situations. You got to be well uh, organized. You got to practice like your hair's on fire. You got to make sure your your guys uh, know exactly what they're doing. And then you got game week. You know, and, and so when you're in the NCAA Division One one circuit, you got five weeks, like you said, to be able to prepare those guys. <clears throat> so my challenge for coaching staff and our players is that. We got to be so organized that there's no wasted time in making sure that we teach in every situation that we got. I think we've done it. We're very thorough, very proud of the staff we got it coming in, and I think our veteran group of guys and players is really going to help us in this field. Obviously, you've heard the expectations, the fans, the, uh, and you got a great fan base. And they're expecting good things this year. Is that add a little pressure? Do you like it? We want it. Bring it on. We're excited about having this high expectations. You know, we're not in it to finish second. We always talk about it. We've got high expectations of where this program started, where it is now, and now we're in a little different role. We've got seniors, we've got a mature team than we've had. We've got great competition. And I really think that the expectation level is what you put on yourself. You know, if it's what you describe and where you want to go with it is very, very important. And that's our vision. And that's what we've laid out. And the only expectations we have is what's in our room. And if we go through this process of taking every minute of every practice and working our tail end off and play every play like it's our last, great thing to do. John, let me ask you a quick question. Talk about your team's off-season workouts as far as what you know and how, how the guys have attended and how much they really seem to be ready to, to get into it. We've been uh, very fortunate to have a uh, majority of our team here all summer. We've had 
uh, anywhere close to 60 to 70 kids here on a daily basis and working out from middle of May to really till last night. And uh, so we're, we're really excited about the growth they've made, people that are coming back to Pueblo that have gone for the summer. And uh, we're, we're really anxious to get this team together. You know, you talk about goals. I mean, you had beat Chadra, but now you guys were the hunters when you first started out four years ago. Now you're the hunted. You're on their bulletin boards. Talking to Adam State's up play-by-play -play guy a couple of weeks ago. They want you. How does it feel to be the hunted now, knowing that you're on other teams' with bulletin board, and they want it, they're chomping at the bit to try to knock you down a perch? I, I don't know if we're the hunted or not, but we're going to show up when game time play starts. We're going to show up and we're going to play our, our, our tail ends off. We're going to have a well-coached team. We're going to have a team that's going to play hard from the start of the gun to the finish of the last 60 minutes. We're going to play every game like it's our last and enjoy everything about it. So if you worry about being the hunted or the hunter or whatever, I think you're worried about the wrong things. We're going to worry about our process our attitude and the way we're going to go after it. Understand, I believe I'm correct if I'm not letting me know what 22 seniors coming back. Talk about the true importance of that senior leadership, something that you have for the really first time. We have 26 kids that started with us four years ago. And those kids have laid a great foundation. I'm going to, um, it's very rewarding <laughs> to me that we've had 26 kids stay that are going to get a Colorado State University Pueblo degree. They've been a pillars of our community. They've done all the right things they need, need to do. And that really gets me excited. But I think what what's really important to me is that we have a saying as a pride and tradition a packed football will not be entrusted to the timid nor the weak. And these guys that have done this, the 26 guys, Right now, their legacy is still being written. Their legacy right now is that they're really 20 to 12 in the last three years. Now we're seeing what it's going to be in the fourth years. And so and for us to be able to establish that, those 26 guys will ever be enshrined in our locker room. We're going to make a poster of those guys and understand those are the people that laid that foundation. Nothing against Panhandle State or some of the other openers, uh, you know, quality opponents in the past, but quite a quite that's quite an opener to start things off with going down there to Canyon, Texas at an 18,000 seat stadium, and that'll be an early litmus test for your football team. What a better way to start your season. What a better way to start where we want to go. You might as well. We're playing three national caliber playoff teams. We're playing West Texas, that was a national power, Northwest Oklahoma was an uh, NEI division uh, playoff team. And they were playing Colorado School of Mines. And the University of Nebraska Carney, as you know, was right in the mix of trying to get in the playoffs. So we're, we're playing a tough schedule. I don't know anybody else in the country that's playing three playoff teams. But that's what you want to be. That's where you want to go. This is where we want to be in our program. And we want to be compared with the very best. And to be able to establish yourself in the nation, in Colorado, in the RMAC, you got to line up and play the best and see where you are. You got to identify your weaknesses. You got to identify your strengths. And I think we got a pretty good team that will be able to go in and compete and play our ass. You know, John, and I know you, you're focused on one more question for me. I'll let it go. But uh, you know, I, I look. I got a couple of games and some TV exposure. One with mine to CBS, whatever. That's got to be great for not just the program, but for the entire school to really put this whole institution on the map more. I mean, if that that that's great stuff for you guys. Uh, have some national TV. Uh, Exposure. Well, I, I just hope we can give some good exposure. Yeah. Kind of like the bad exposure we got right now. We've uh, been able to capture some people who are really doing those things. But the reality of this thing is, you know, it, it, I think it's a great testimony to not only this university but to the city of Pueblo to be able to put this all together. When you have 155 Division II teams and they pick eight games, and you're one of the eight games on a national level, I think it really says a lot for what this community is about. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Good uh, season, man.